Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by 2007 Hook and Shoot Women's Grand Prix Champion, Caitlin Young. Caitlin, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Caitlin, you got a fight coming up July 28th at Invicta 2. How's training been going for the fight? Great. It's been going really well. I, uh, but they, I had like a perforated eardrum early in the camp, like super early. Um, and then healed up just fine, so it's been nice. Luckily, it didn't take me out of training at all. It was just super annoying trying to like shower and not get water in it and stuff, but it's, uh, it's been good. You're going to be fighting Liz Carmouche. What are your thoughts about her as an opponent? And obviously she's, you know, depending on what rankings you're looking at, she's she's top ten, usually right outside the top five. Um, real aggressive fighter, and, uh, you know, she trains hard. So I'm really happy to be fighting her. This fight was supposed to happen back in 2010. Yeah, but for whatever observant of you. Yeah, so supposed to happen in 2010, now it's come around. Was this a fight that you wanted, or was it just the fight they offered? No, well, it, what had happened was uh, I was supposed to fight another female fighter uh, on a card up in Fargo, um, North Dakota. And then she got pregnant. She found out like two weeks out. And Liz was willing to step in. I'm not sure if she had signed a contract yet or not yet. Um, but she was going to be the replacement for that girl. Right. And then, like, before that was finalized, uh, I got an offer, or I was asked to go fill in on, like, six days' notice for that um, Ultimate Women Challenge. It was a reality show. Right. They throw 16 female fighters in the house. Um, so I, you know, I figured since I would be pulling out of the fight but not on an opponent, it's not like Liz had been training for it for eight weeks. So I was just like, shoot, I'll go. I'll, I'll give the show a try because the payoff was potentially really big. A lot of people thought that you were going to have a rematch with Leslie Smith just because the fight, it ended in a draw, and it was a really good, exciting fight. Were you surprised that they didn't try to put a rematch together? Not really. You know, I think um, I think rematches typically do better if there's a little time to build. I think mm-hmm. the fans would probably prefer to see us have at least one fight each in between. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so they can say, oh, so-and-so looks so much better, or they look the same, or whatever. I think it it does more for the promotion company if they if they give it a little time. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's something they maybe offer like early next year or something, though. You've fought a lot of great fighters throughout your career. Gina Carano, Misha Tate, Julie Kedzie. Where does Liz rank amongst those fighters? Oh, you know, obviously she's, uh, she's right up there. It's, you know, she's in this weight class, which is nice, you know, it's at 135. Um, but, yeah, she's you know, right up there with them. Now... How much film have you studied of her fights? Because, you know, she, she's got, you know, some footage out there. She fought Sarah Kaufman and Marlos Kunin in Strike Force. How much study has gone into the fight? Oh, I've, I've been watching. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I've been watching. You know, a fighter always improves, and her last fight was good, but you can't see a whole It was pretty short, so you don't mm-hmm. see a whole lot. Um, and she wasn't challenged a lot, maybe. Um, but, you know, obviously you watch fights, and, and you kind of see how somebody improves fight to fight and maybe what sort of improvement you can expect from their last fight. Of her past opponents, who's sort of someone that you've you've looked at and similar to what you know your style is and things that have worked against her, are there any things that you've looked at and been like, Well, I saw, you know, so and so do this against her, so I might, you know, try to implement that, anything like that? Um yeah, I mean honestly mm-hmm. like both uh, there are elements of both Kaufman and Marlos' game. Mm-hmm. that I've worked out for this thing. Um, you know, and obviously, like, Kopp and I are both primarily strikers, and, and we both have a different style, but there, there are certainly elements of uh, what she used that I, I plan on implementing. The Leslie Smith fight was your last fight. You fought at Invicta 1 against her. What were your thoughts on that fight? Do you think that, you know, you had done enough to get a W? Oh, yeah. I mean, I felt like I had more effective strikes, mm-hmm. and I felt like... Um, you know, I was closer. I, mean, I feel like if it had gone five rounds, uh, it would have been more obvious. But, you know, it didn't. It was a three-round fight. So, yes, I felt like I did enough. However, I'm not going to complain too much because you don't leave it in the hands of the judges then if you want to whine about it. You know, mm-hmm. that's kind of my attitude. Mm-hmm. Caitlin, you rose to fame in 2007 when you had that great hook-and-shoot tournament. I mean, that's that's like the blueprint for what you're supposed to do in a tournament because you have 
a lot of people say in tournaments we have to fight multiple times in a night. You know, don't suffer any damage and finish your fights quickly. You did that. It was just brilliant the way you were able to do that. Your knockout with the head kick of Misha Tate, definitely the best women's MMA head kick knockout ever. But after that, you kind of fell off a little. You had a losing streak. What went wrong for you uh-huh. during that time? You know, I think, um, I think I was pretty inexperienced with MMA when I got started. You know, I'll say that I think it was kind of like a perfect storm. Mm-hmm. Um, I was pretty inexperienced. Like, I just started training MMA. I did a, a tie boxing tournament in June of 2007, mm-hmm. and then started training MMA after that. So I had my debut in October, and then hook and shoot was November. So, like, even when I fought Gina, I had only been doing MMA. I mean, my first fight was only eight months prior. Right. So I think it was, and, and I was fighting the best in the world, the weight class above mine. Right. So I think part of it was lack of experience on my part. And then I think, you know, I allowed those losses to compound a little bit and affect my confidence. Um, and, you know, then I lost some fights that I should not have lost as a result. Um, so I feel like I've got the mental part of the game figured out now. And my skill level has obviously improved quite a bit, especially on the ground. Uh you know, and it's been, I mean, I've just basically had to play catch up, if that makes sense. And I think it really showed in my record. During that time of the losses, was it was it a case of just too much too soon? Maybe. And, it, and it's not like anybody pushed me into it, really. I wanted to, mm-hmm. you know, uh, take these fights. I don't want easy fights, but I think, I think I maybe, you know, got in a little bit over my head a little early. Was it a serious time where you had you thought about retirement? You thought, you know, hey, I might not be able to dig myself out of this hole. Was that ever a thought? It was, but it wasn't. Not like retiring for good necessarily, but just a break. I was having a really hard time with like I was trying to balance school and work, and I think I was just wearing too many hats. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the place I'm working now, I'm doing personal training, which is much easier, much more flexible schedule. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I, there was a point where I was very, very frustrated, uh, and it just took me a while to work out of that. Well, you're two zero and one since then. Has it just been the mental part, or has it been you know difference in training, difference how you approach the fights, different sort of game plans? What has it been that's been able to lead you to success now? It's a it's a different sort of approach, different sort of training. Um, I I think. I don't want to go into the dieting part too much, but I right. think I was over dieting too mm-hmm. for some fights because I got sick in multiple fight camps in a row, and I think I was cutting in calories too much. Um, and it's funny because I was looking at like lineup of some of my uh, weigh-in photos, and you can see I have much less muscle mass. And I think mm-hmm. uh, you know that was not helpful. You know, not being 100 percent healthy. Uh, you know, like I said, I think it was really kind of the perfect storm. I really figured out some things as far as how to approach it mentally. How I need to taper, how I need to diet, that sort of thing. Liz Carmouche, she's you know highly ranked. She, she's coming from Strike Force because of the little agreement they have with Invicta, where fighters can come over uh, from Strike Force to Invicta. Same thing with Bellator and some other organizations. You, on the other hand, you're not with Strike Force. You're not with Bellator. You're not with any of those organizations. What's your contract situation with Invicta? Um, you know, we had, uh, kind of talked about the idea of. Uh, uh, like a semi-exclusive thing, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I just have this, this fight offer. I'd prefer to fight with them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't really have the desire to go anywhere else. It, it, it would appear that Strike Force is sort of on its way out. I think Invicta is going to be the premier organization for women. So you see a, a time where when Strike Force is done that they won't transition to the UFC, you're going to see that... You, you're saying that we're going to oh, see, you know, a couple years without... Women's MMA, even when Strike Force is gone. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. I, I could see them going in the UFC. I mean, I think I think Dana loves Ronda <laughs> for mm-hmm. sure. Right, right. So, um, and uh, you know, I could definitely see that happening. I'm not sure. I just I don't I don't see Strike Force being around for long. I guess. Well, if you get a win against Liz Carmouche and Strike Force comes, you would have no problem going there, correct? Oh, I'd rather, no, I'd rather stay with Invicta. Yeah, really, really. Hmm. Uh huh. Is it just because um, Invicta's, you know, sole focus is on women's MMA as for Strike Force, you know, they're kind of, you know, we'll do just one one big fight a card? Is that why? Well, yeah, I mean, look at how long Misha was between fights. 
Mm-hmm. What was it? I mean, July to like March. Right. That's a long time if, if that's your primary source of income. And if you're fighting at the top levels, you're fighting for a title. I mean, you, you have to be training full time. Um, and that that's pretty tough to depend on. Right. You know, so I don't think it's uh, the primary focus to keep the fighters busy. And Invictus, like I said, have been really great to me and all of us. But, uh, you know, it's nothing against Strike Force, but I, there are a ton of female fighters in Invicta. It's the main focus. It's, it's getting all their energy, and I, I really like being there. I believe this is going to be your third fight of the year. This, this next fight on July 28th. Uh, you haven't had three fights in a year in a while. I mean, the last time you had three fights, 2007, I think, and three of them came in one night. How active do you want to be the rest of the year? <laughs> we'll see how my body's holding up mm-hmm. after this one. <laughs> um, after my fight with Leslie, my hands were really banged up, mm-hmm. um, which I think is just kind of the nature of striking with four house gloves. Right. Um, I, I like staying active, though. I feel like it's been easier to improve, you know, if you can say, oh, this is what I did in my last fight, and it's still fresh in your mind when you're training for the next one, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, things you want to improve on or things you like that you did, and I think it's a, a, a much better way to build your career to kind of um, stay on it in a way, you know, instead of sort of having, having these long legs in between, and then you're sort of fighting ring rust the next time you fight. Uh, I'd, I'd like to stay pretty active, I think, but again, you're sort of limited by what your body can take, so I kind of try to reassess after after a fight takes place. July 28th at Invicta 2 against Liz Carmouche, how does the fight end? I don't know. I don't see this going to decision, uh, and I'll be looking to finish wherever we end up, mm-hmm. but I'm not, I'm not a predictor of fights. Caitlin, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? so much to everybody who tuned in to the last Invicta of C-Card. They had an amazing, amazing numbers. Um, please tune in again. And second, I'd love to thank my sponsors, Game Bread Fightwear, Intimidation, Sterling Entertainment Group, <clears throat> sorry, uh, and MMA Chick, and actually Michelle Old is also sponsoring me. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck, July 28th at Invicta 2 against Liz Carmouche. All right, thank you.